are looking at the code and you will see uh, as we go through this video it's changed quite a lot so I've added as normal the descriptions of what I found everything in in here the dew point calculation you'll see later on can be found at this website at line 12 a big thank you to Dave uh, who runs his web channel um, YouTube channel his ID is G6EJD very very, very knowledgeable guy um, thank him for the time and date clock and um, if you're not using the dark theme then look at my previous video we need to thank Jeff Thompson for that so I have and this is uh, here the font awesome um, will will show up uh, we've used some graphics which are taken from another website um, sorry web page and um, it, it makes our web page look, <laughs> look much nicer so that's cool so you'll see here uh, where are we this line here line 33 I've changed the library that the OLED is using so make sure you've got that loaded and you'll notice here that we've got some um, different libraries as well uh, that's because we've made a web page uh, and a web server so how cool is that I'm not quite sure how it all works but it is working so I need to do some more research these lines here um, wasn't from where I got the code these void statements weren't in there but for the IDE to recognize my code I've had to put these void statements in so <coughs> make sure you um, have them in uh, that's our standard uh, well we've changed that slightly this is where we initialize the uh, we're setting up the SSID uh, the OLED now this is this is new so include my config.h so you will find that file in the code when you download it and it will look similar to this file so this is a demo file so uh, these two lines here I believe if it can't find the file it will make you make the file I believe that's how it works so in line uh, here this is in 1011 you need to put your SSID and your <laughs> not router password <laughs> router password um, you need to put your SSID here and your your router router got me at it now in there to make it work so what this does instead of me putting in my SSID and password here so when I'm making these videos you get to see my <laughs> secret passwords what happens now because we've included this statement here uh, the so the code will go and look in the myconfig.h file and extract the necessary information and pop it in the code magic <laughs> easy when you know how line 65 this is at the beginning of the new time clock so in this um, in this line you, you need to choose one of these lines here that matches your um, your area where you are in the world so I've set mine because I'm near near Rome and that just makes sure it pulls the right time date etc off the internet so these lines here is part of the time clock as well and I believe what they're doing is the way this code is working is initially it gets the time and date and everything it needs off the internet and then once an hour it will go again and check what time we're running on our it within our code is still correct and if it's not correct it will pull down the corrected time of the internet and um, change it for you so uh, in our code we put it down once we let the um, millis function which we cover shortly what that is update the time and then once an hour it goes and checks the time is still correct and if it's not it makes the adjustments that's good this is standard here <coughs> these were standard these strings and int variables here I've put
put in uh, the string ones are used for the web page which we cover shortly and these was me trying to do some something technical which I still can't get right so uh, I'm really struggling so you're finding the code that these aren't referenced anywhere else <clears throat> this is now part of the uh, web server uh, it starts a web server this is now the uh, part of the millis function so what a millis function is instead of using a delay and if we had to use a delay statement I didn't know the Arduino actually stops where it is for the uh, uh, coded uh, time so if you put 3000 it will stop for three seconds and then it will start again so when it's stopped it physically can't do anything else because it's physically stopped so <clears throat> what the millis function is doing is like a delay function <coughs> excuse me but what it does um it allows the code to keep looping round and as it's looping round it checks what the millis value is and if it's equal to the value you want it to be then it will go and do something and then come back so it's it's a longer way to write a delay function but it keeps the code running which is fantastic and there's lots of videos on uh, YouTube of how to do that so this is an interval we set so this is updating the sensor values every three seconds so every 3000 milliseconds so as it says on this line here we're now gonna make a web page so this is pretty cool um, so what have we done so these first few lines it's 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 using this font awesome in line one two two it's we're going to be referring to that website and we're going to be pulling some icons off that website to use on our web page which is pretty cool it saves you having to draw the icons I assume or or using a library somewhere you just refer to them and it pulls it down <coughs> which is all well and good as long as that website is up and running then you'll get the icons so that's good so this is the title of my web page and that should appear in the tab when we open it of the browser so this is some now some styling uh, all, all these and I'm not going to go into great detail of styling because I'm still working on the styling but this basically uh, lets the web page look a bit nicer and if you want to change how it looks then you change some values in here so basically the ones that are working at the moment are the h1 and which other ones working is h3 is working the um, para paragraph i believe that one is does work so they're working it's these ones are not working so i will tell you what that's trying well i'll tell you now i'm trying to when the web page is work when the data is being displayed on our web page it says whether the sensor is working or not and when it's working it displays working and when it's failed it will say failed because <clears throat> i found that the web page when the sensor is not failing it won't show the ana values so if the sensor fails uh, on the OLED it used to show us ANA which says the sensor can't make any sensible readings so I'm going to display something different well I couldn't get that to work on the web page so I'm I made a little uh, error routine if we're going to call it that that tells me whether it's working or not working and I'm trying to color code that and that's what I've struggled with because it's a bit of CSS and javascript and i have tried and tried and tried my hair's gone gray and i've been pulling my hair out and i just can't do it so i'm gonna have to come back to you on that one so this line these lines here are saying we are refreshing the time clock every second and this says the web page keep going back to the internet to pull down the right time because i believe if you keep doing that you'll get thrown out and you won't be allowed to pull down the values so we pull the values down once our millis code later on will 
show us that we up we refresh the time every second and because because the code takes obviously milliseconds to run throughout its loop if we keep refreshing every second plus whatever duration the code takes to run then we could have our time clock become inaccurate so what it's going to do is going to run through the code and every hour go back to the internet check the current time and if it's lost a few seconds or gained a few seconds it will pull down the correct time and carry on displaying it now the way that works is perfect for what I want is give me the rough time and the day or, or, or and the year and that's perfect for me but if you want a really accurate time and perhaps there's a better way so this function here is pulling down the date etc so here we are now creating our physical web page where our data and the text we want to appear on our web page is going to be there so I've got a title in the h1 tags which gives me it's going to give me some red text and then the h3 tag is going to give me some blue text and the, the text is going to be slightly smaller now because that works this was back here so the h1 tags gives me a font size the font to use how it's aligned and it's going to be red where the h3 tag here is a smaller font and blue so if you want to change it you can change it there and that's as much as I really know about styling at the moment so these lines is where we are start building our web page so the first line at 185 it's referring to an icon which is found on the font awesome website and it's going to display a thermostat on our web page and it's going to be a color of a turquoise so that's set in this line here then I print a uh, we're going to call them labels and the label is temperature and then because the PCB board now is now a web server what it's doing is it's reading the sensor and that sensor then creates because we've told it to create not it does it on its own we we've we've told it to publish the values of temperature and humidity etc onto a web page and our software our program then will refer to the data on those web page collect that data and then publish it on the web page that we're building here so that that's pretty cool and opens a lot of avenues to to, to use different sensors and different data so here we we build labels and we pull the data for humidity here we do it for the dew point here we are doing it for the heat index here we are doing it for this is the warning system that I'm trying to, uh, to call it develop so it's going to tell me whether the sensors are working or they're not working and then this was just a bit of fun that I was playing around with learning how things work really it's just gonna say whether um, why we're doing this and it's gonna say checking if the weather is good for uh, cycling this these two lines simple two lines but it displays the time and date on on the um, on the web page now this is this was a different piece of code this this is a different piece of code so it's not it's not the code from the time clock that's displaying on the screen I believe this was a JavaScript or something that it's pulling the the time and date off the internet and just displaying on what web page so um, I, I will confirm that when I come back and do the JavaScript um, CSS type stuff so this is this is us uh, pushing and getting the sensor values to and from the web page so I'm just gonna pause the video for a second so you'll see here th this is the web page that we created and um, the serial monitor will tell 
you what IP address you need to look at. So if we, uh, we, 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 we come back to that. So this is the red text I made in the H1 tag. This is the H3 tag. Then these are the font awesome icons that I'm pulling off. These, these, um, if you can't see my cursor, I <laughs> had my cursor on the wrong screen. So this is the red text, blue text. This is the icons that I'm using on the front awesome. These are the labels that I've hard coded into our web page. And then these are the values that are being pulled off the web server and we're pulling them into our web page. This is the little bit of uh, error correcting I'm trying to do. This is the little bit of text I'm just playing with. And then this is that two lines of code that gives you the time and date. So if we go back to a web page, because it creates a web page called temperature and it will it, it's posting the temperature live here and then my error handling routine is on this web page so it's uh, at the IP address forward slash temp sensor working because the sensor is working at the moment when, when I pull the sensor out that changes the failed and it will show on our web page and I'll demonstrate that later so that's what it's doing so let me go back to here and uh, where are we, where are we, where are we? So on our screen you can see that we've got a lot more data on our little OLED. So temperature, humidity, dew point, heat index and then the time, date and day. So that's great. So This lot of code here is is pushing the values onto the web server, and then we're getting those values to to then push into our web page. So that's doing it for all the values. So the temperature, humidity, heat index, uh, dew point. Then this is the two that are pulling in whether the sensors are working or not. So this is all part of how it works. Again, I'm not going to go into detail because I'm not entirely sure exactly what everything is doing. But these temperatures underscore pH are placeholders. So it pulls down the information of string T, which is the temperature that is pushed onto the web page, and it then stores it as a placeholder. And then let me go back to my left screen. The placeholders are these, the, this information here, 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 and here, and these, 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 these data and words are the placeholders so whatever value it pulls up the web page then it says well I've now got this value and I'm just going to update this value because this web page is being updated every three seconds I believe it is and but only the values are updated the text is just static it doesn't change so the only uh, information that is being transferred is the information that changes so let me go back to here so this is as before this code um, this line here pin mode for output my onboard LED or our onboard LED on this PCB board is pin mode 4 so I've made that an output because I have made a little routine that if the humidity goes over 65 and you can change that value the light will be illuminated and we can move the pin I've only used pin 4 because it's a visual sign that something's changed but you could change a different pin on the board and then get that to switch a relay on and off which could turn a fan on and off so that's that's quite cool 
so this is standard how we had before this is slightly different now because we have different text how we need to write to the screen so you can uh, flip the screen vertically if, if you need to if you don't need to do that then you just comment that line out the contrast offset really low I found that anywhere around 200 was really really bright obviously the lower you have it I assume the less energy you use in the longer the screen is going to last font size font size 10 is the smallest font size the uh, library works to so that's what I selected um, this part is part of the time clock where it's pulling um, the data initially off the internet so it's doing it once and then we go back every hour to check it's uh, working this is the one of the interrupts that this clever guy has made David um, so it's, it, we look further down in the code and that will appear this is all to do with the web page stuff and again I can't really comment because I'm not really certain you know what's pushing and what's pulling the data off but um, I have added to it so I, I, I can add to it and, and push more data on there but all this code yeah I don't know I mean this this is saying server on let's say look at line where I let's well let's look at the the, the temperatures 365 on server forward slash what was that back slash temperature so that's going to look at that web page and then it's going to get that data and store it in the string t and then the next one does looks at the humidity page and gets the data and stores it under h string and scepter and it does it for them all so then we get into the main loop now here at 392 I've put a uh, uh, well this is the beginning of a, a go to loop now people say not to use go to because C language you're meant to just read the code top to bottom and keep looping through it however I wanted a error routine and I couldn't work out how to do it I some form of interrupt probably I need but I've used this apparently it's bad practice but it is working at the moment so this is <coughs> the millis function so this is instead of the using delay this is saying um, it, uh, <coughs> the millis delay above is 3000 so it's saying if the millis value has changed since we last looped around this code if it's changed by a value of 3000 then go and do something if it hasn't it just continues down and it doesn't it doesn't do this that's my understanding of it so this is the standard um, error routine so if the sensors fail to read it will <coughs> print a warning on the serial monitor and then it will print a message I've used this temp sensor working equals failed because then that will get pushed to the web server and then that will appear on our web page it does it the same if it's working but the temperature it does the same for the humidity and this is a calculation that I found online that will work out the dew point subject to heat uh, temperature and humidity so that's just some mathematics and the link is in the top showing you where I found that so then that uh, dew point will get pushed to a web page and then we will extract that data and put it on our web page that we've actually created um, heat index is calculated by the temperature sensor itself <coughs> excuse me so this is how we are getting the values off of the sensor so this now this first lot is if the temperature sensor fails so we can so let me first of all pull off the sensor off the board 
you should say, I say error check the HT sensor so that you can't miss that because before the display would stay the same and the values would go to NAN which was a sort of warning to say the values have changed so let me now go to show you the, what happens on the web page if I bring this screen in you can see now here it's saying it's failed so what I'm trying to do at the moment is trying to find out how we change that failed text initially it would be uh, say green and if it failed to go red and perhaps it make it flash or something but that's some coding that I don't know how to do so if I put the sensor back in now within three seconds because it will take three seconds for the code to run around the loop it comes back and tells us it's working so that's good so let me go back to here and the screens come back to life so this is just the code here this line is just printing the time and date to the serial port then this is now the display commands that I have written to push the information to the display so we just say you know in in a certain place in x and y print the word temp then uh, print the, the string value of t and then print uh, the degree c sign so that does that for all the values then at the bottom here it prints the time and date oh the screen's gone off let me uh, just reset that come back to life um, and now this this line here if h equal uh, if h is greater than 65 digital right for low else digital right for high so if I can yes if I put my finger on that we should see the humidity go up and then you should see the blue LED the onboard LED come on when it goes above 65 camera angle is not the best yeah you just see it coming in, in the corner just down there so I take it off so we're looking just down here and it's gone off so and you, then it, that's just a visual indication now I'm touching the sense again so you should see it come back on shortly and that that we could change the pin to another pin on the chip and then that could be driving a relay which could drive the fan so that's could be pretty useful so then this is just the Wi-Fi setup and then all this stuff at the bottom is the clever code that Dave has written which updates the time clock, uh, pulls it initially pulls off the internet and then updates it in, in in itself. So yes, I don't understand any of that, so I can't really comment. So that's it. So we've certainly moved on, and things have changed. I'm really chuffed about the web page uh, because you can, you know, you can access that on your phone as long as you're on the same Wi-Fi network now. You know, I'm driving towards home automation here. So my next step, uh, the Starlin getting the green and red text is just a bit of nicety. But the next step will be M MQTT, which is a system that home automation programs use where these values can be pushed to an MQTT server. Then we can do stuff with that data using... Um, Home Assistant is one of the ones that I favour, and then we can use a thing called Node Red, which is a what might I call it a block visual building coding system to do automation. So <laughs> I've got loads to do, and I've got so much to learn. So um, yeah, I mean, if anyone's building this, I mean, obviously, I, I originally, well, I have done this because this board came with Linux based software and obviously the, then the, the program is a uh, line based it's not graphical and I just couldn't get my head 
around that. So obviously I started from scratch. I knew a little bit about the Arduino ID because I have doubled over the years, but nothing like this at all. I mean, this this has taken me on so far within a, in a, within a month or so that I've been playing around with this. Um, so the IDE is is good. Now that it, it's got the dark theme, I can see, I can see what I'm reading as well, which makes a, <laughs> makes a big difference. Anyway, if you've used uh, this, then drop some comments below and if anyone stumbles across this video that actually knows what they're doing and can help me along please drop me a comment or get me get in touch with me uh, through YouTube uh, because you know this this is the learning curve I'm not out to prove anything um, I'm certainly no expert um, I'm learning as I go on and this is recording my my progress and my failures really so um, hope you found it useful and hopefully you've got some data working so here I am I'm now uploading the code as you can see down the bottom here um, it's uploaded I've opened serial monitor and I've changed the code um, to make it slower so you'll be able to see your SSID I'll put a pause statement in there so it just makes it easier for you sorry just had to pause the video there's my uh, my hay fever allergy has kicked in it's only March and <laughs> I nearly blew my head off Anyway, that's Andy signing out now. Um, join me on the next video where I'm hopefully going to be doing some CSS and JavaScript coding to make the website the way I want it to work. And then the next video will be uh, MQTT, as long as I can learn how to do it. Anyway, it's Andy now signing out.